Hi again and welcome back. Now in the last video we talked about manipulation and congestion and how they are not the same thing. The questions we asked at the end of that video were how do you benefit from manipulation? How do you trade it? How do you know when you're in it? Now to be successful at trading you need to be continually putting the story together. We talked about that and related it to a movie. You are looking for clues to ultimately reveal the outcome. Do this consistently and you will be successful. That is a certainty. So the first benefit of manipulation is having the trade you just entered result in a loss. Now I could almost see the raised eyebrows at this point, but stick with me. Amateur traders spend most of their time trying to avoid losses. They are moving stops, looking for the turn so they can get into a trade with a tiny stop loss, and basically any other hodgepodge of ideas centered around loss avoidance. Now, loss avoidance is really pain avoidance. The body is wired to move away from pain and towards pleasure. It is this that drives you to avoid losses. If you're going to be a professional trader, then you must accept losses. Take your idea of a loss as being a bad thing, screw it up, throw it in the bin, and lock the lid for good measure. A trading loss should be used as a tool to indicate what you might be doing next. Are you going to be buying next, selling or staying out of the market? You need to look at that loss and ask why. Not why did it lose, but why did the market move in the way it did? Now asking that question puts you in detective mode. And remember, all you're trying to do here is to work out what the Apple seller is up to. What stage of his repeating cycle of business is he in? We are taking the loss and using it to enter into the market maker's world. Now, by now observing the following market movement after your loss, you have the opportunity to gain some potentially very profitable information. What are you trying to do? Now, again, you are just trying to work out where in the cycle, accumulation, manipulation and profit release, the market is. So again, not why did I lose, but why did the market move in the way it did? The first question for you to ask is, did I get stopped out and then see the market continue in the direction I had predicted? If the answer to this is yes, then ask the second question. Has anything changed that affects the reason why I took this trade in the first place? If it has not changed, and this was just a retrace of the market, then can I enter again in the same direction as the trade that I just got stopped out on? And now we need to pause and reflect on something I said in a previous video regarding the blending of accumulation, manipulation and profit release. Now this blending is vital to understand. Now, right now at this point, I run the risk of blowing your mind. Uh, I run the risk of seeing you throw your arms in the air, throw a hissy fit and run off into the woods. Uh, but I have to tell you this anyway. The market is always in the three phases at any point in time. Everything is blended together. OK, so if you've run off into the woods, please come back and give me a little more time to explain. Let's do this with a quick drawing. Uh, and I'll explain this on a whiteboard. Let's have a look about the cycles and blending. OK, so here on the whiteboard, what we're going to look at is the blending of accumulation, manipulation and profit release. We'll represent accumulation uh, in an area like this. Manipulation like this and then we'll have our profit release going up like this nice and simple now what we can do is here we can split these off very easily so we can say go through here that this is accumulation through here it's also a blending of manipulation you can see here this is a nice clear bit of manipulation and then through up here this can be is our profit release now if we look at these we can see there is like clear three areas we can say this is a accumulation this is a manipulation and all the way up here is our profit release as the market tracks all the way through here okay let's just get rid of that now what we're looking at is when we're looking at blending is what is going on 
as the market gets into a profit release phase, because it's not just a profit release phase. That profit release phase, that rise, in this case, we've done it as a rise. You can see that we have areas like this where the market sort of drops back. And people call those sort of setbacks or dropbacks or rollovers. It doesn't really matter what you call them. But what I want you to do is to transpose this accumulation here into this area here. And what you'll often see is something like this as the market comes up to that point and then before it rolls over and then the manipulation again is this rollover through here so what you end up with is another area very much like the area we have down here but now we've got a blending of the three phases within this we've got accumulation we've got manipulation and we've got the profit release as the market starts to get back in to its up move through here now let's move this up to this next level up here and you'll often see these these step backs if you like as, you, as a market is moving up and the same way as when a market moves down you, you have the same retrace areas as on the mark, mark move market down but let's just focus on the upside for now to keep this nice and clear let's just get rid of those tidy this up a little bit okay all right so what we see is then the market comes over like we saw it here, and then the market's now into this area here. Now, you may well have got into the market as the market broke out of here. So let's suppose that you bought the market here. The market then carries on up, and you're feeling quite happy. You're, you're uh, doing okay. You're in the money. Um, there's uh, everything to look, looking good about. Market then comes back down. Makes you sweat a little bit, maybe. Whatever, doesn't really matter. The market then breaks out of here and carries on up. Now, if you're just looking at your trade, you will have not really realized what is going on in this area through here, just the same as you wouldn't here. Because you're too focused, you're too caught up in your trade and what's going on, as opposed to discovering what could be happening within these areas of these, we'll call them these rollovers for now. So as this comes over like this and then breaks out again, what you will often be tempted to do is to move your stop loss. So your initial stop loss that may have been around about this level here, you will now move it up to around this level here. Often what you'll see at this point is the market that will come up, come back down, go through that level, and then the market will get back into its move again. And what's actually happened as the market came down through this point here is it punched out the stops which went to serve the market makers as another form of accumulation. In this case, they accumulated more buy orders ready to then sell back into the continuing rise. And this is how blending occurs all the time. Move up is the profit release through here. We have the accumulation and the manipulation. And then we move back in to the uh, profit release. But you can see within this area, we have this complete blending of accumulation, manipulation and profit release. And that blending is very important that you understand so that you can decipher, OK, so where did this come from? Where did this last move come from through here? And where did the initial move come from? Where did the, all this start from? Which is, of course, is down here. Now, providing that this still exists, in other words, this hasn't happened up through here, you really need to be considering staying with this long side of the market. Now, when this down here and we start to see all this happen up here again, then the whole thing sets up again where we're going back into an area of accumulation, manipulation and then into a profit release, which may well obviously be into a down move. But this this is the complete cycle that we're looking at through here. Now we'll talk more about that and what we can expect in terms of the distance, the overall distance from here to around about here, which is quite interesting in itself. We'll talk more about that later on in a later video. But that is how blending occurs uh, going through these um, points that we've marked up through here. And that's what you need to be aware of and to decipher which is the predominant phase as the market comes out of this. So you're, you're looking for this area through here. You're looking for the area through here and so on. OK, so you see the market is always in the three, three phases, but with shifting emphasis or prominence. At any one point in time, there will be a predominant phase of either accumulation, manipulation or profit release. We as traders want to be able to filter out the profit release phase because this is how we're going to become consistently profitable. I think it's page 15 and 82 of my book digs deeper into the phases, as does my comprehensive training course. But for now, let's just carry on with this. 
Okay, so it's time to get back to putting the story together. Now, we can never know for sure whether the market makers are accumulating buy orders ready for a profit release into a rising market or accumulation of sell orders ready for a profit release into a falling market. If anyone tells you they can tell you what's going on with this with certainty, put your hand on your wallet and run as you're about to part with money to an internet trading guru. It's simply not true. There are, however, signs that you can use to give you an edge. And with money management, this is edge is all you need. It's a bit like a card counter at the blackjack table. The house doesn't like card counters because over time they remove money from the casino. Does the card counter lose hands? Of course. The card counter knows that each losing hand takes him closer to winning. You, just like the card counter, you're going to be keeping tally and looking for signs that reveal which is the predominant of the three phases at any point in time. If the predominant phase is accumulation, you do not want to trade. If the predominant phase is manipulation, you do not want to trade. If the predominant phase is profit release, then you should already be in the market and in profit along with the market makers. Now, as you get more experience trading with the market makers, so you'll become more adept at reading the phases and with a little more time, you'll start to understand what is likely being accumulated in the accumulation and manipulation phase. It's a bit like the card counter who can predict by remembering cards that have been dealt as to what cards are likely to come up next. The card counter can never know. Imagine if the card counter learned how to count cards and then said to himself, OK, uh, but I'm not going to bet now until I know what the next card will be. I'm sure you can see him or her sitting at the card table and never placing a trade. Sorry, never placing a bet. Now, in trading, this is known as analysis paralysis. The card counter uses his edge to win. You are going to do the same. We'll look at that edge in the next video.